I was doing a watch party on our Twitch channel with Crumbs and on the Esports Bet Discord, and I was very seriously mauling about NA. It was bad. I mean, the Cloud9 game made they me very, sure. yeah. very angry. I, I'm, I'm just bummed out by Cloud9. I'm disappointed. Like, I don't understand what's going on with their mid lane champion pool right now. Doesn't seem like Jensen is fully back online, and it hasn't looked that way for a lot of this split. Even Jensen's big game. I mean, here's the had- obvious question, Monty. As you've said, one of the best champions is Silas, if you have the right card. He's playing an Ivia and fucking Zillion, mate. Like, and the joke is he'll play anything but Silas. Like, what? <laughs> I mean, what year is it, right? I like, know exactly. Like, what the? <laughs> an Ivia. Bro, the joke is, like, I won't say who, but like, if I did an interview now and asked the middle, like, why don't you play an Ivia? They'd just be like, because it's 2022. You know what I mean? Like, they wouldn't even waste, waste my time humoring that question, Monty. Like, <laughs> good news. You know what? Something's been missing. Something hasn't quite been there, has it? You know, every time you watch playoffs and you think, ah, it sucks. This is the one time I'm glad eight out of 10 teams make the playoffs. TSM's back in the playoffs, boys. (laughs) So all you need to know is this. You know, before we were sort of like, because it was just shit, we barely talked about them. Well, now we get to actually enjoy them lose. Like, it's going to be funny if TSM comes last in the playoffs. Of course it is. Like, there's no way to get around that. Like, you can make all the excuses you want. It'll happen. So I want to see them play. Because here's the funny thing. If I actually look in the playoffs, there's not a single team that should beat in the best of five. Like, you tell me which team they're supposed to beat, Monty. Who Who is excited about watching these games? Oh, you mean it's- you're not excited to watch, Monty, a team which, due to the way seeding works, will be playing a much better team who, over an entire split, can win six games, but now they're supposed to win three in five. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not a very exciting prospect for obvious reasons. Think about it. Like, that sounds terrible. What am I supposed to believe in? It was one of those scenarios where it was like the reverse Doctor Strange, where it's like, yes. how many scenarios does Vitality make playoffs? <laughs> it's like, I can only find one where they don't, right? It's yes. absolutely insane that this team couldn't actually scrape together yeah. a win. So they end the season with a four five game losing streak technically because they lost the tiebreaker as yep. well and what's crazy is that they all they had to do was win one of these oh they uh, yeah one of these just last five games yeah. any of them just any of them they could have beaten astralis sk fanatic or rogue or excel and on top of that if fanatic beats misfits or if Misfits beats Fnatic, they're already in, right? So they had f- one of five games to win, and also they had to hope Fnatic doesn't win. And in all of those scenarios, they couldn't pull one game win. And of course, Fnatic takes the win against Misfits at the same time. Absolutely insane that this could happen. How much? How much you actually think that Vitaly would have brought in playoffs? You know, as you said, like probably probably would have shit the bed, could have shit the bed, but like to my estimation, this is like the perfect storyline in terms of like how this roster could have ended at least in my estimate because you have like the most cocky players in the world in my opinion with Alfari. Per- i mean perks perks has a right to be cocky right he's he's like european gold potentially like him or cabs but they have Alfari, who is cocky every single year and then he blames every single one of his teammates every single one of his coaches after the year and then he moves on to the next roster has another roster change in his jungle goes from self-made to haru which was actually an upgrade in my estimation and then he shits the bed again. What what can he even say at that point, right? What can he even say at that point? Like this is just, you know, at least to my, to, for my for my personal vindication, I feel vindicated because I've been saying this about Afari all these years. You know that I don't think he's that good, and then he misses playoffs again, and it just doesn't look good. You know, it doesn't look good anymore. This is a team that you know came out you know looking pretty good after MSI. Obviously had a. Very bizarre MSI run of powering up, then completely getting shit on. And then they spend a lot of this split being kind of terrible. And then they end the the split on a five game win streak, beating the team in first place to take first place, guarantee their qualification for Worlds, returning to form at the exact right time. So what are your impressions of G2 and how they got themselves back into shape amazing? Like in the earlier part of the split, whenever they made a play, it felt like that there was like the 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 potential for it to go very wrong. And the game flow was really like relying on them like making more way more plays and really getting caps ahead, especially. But nowadays it feels, it feels like there's a, like a fluid motion in their play. Even with Flacket and 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 uh uh Tagamas. Flacket does uh, Tagamas don't really form up to standards which 
you know, we, at this point, you don't really expect them to be like the best bot in any way. Uh, they still seem to be like well out machine around the top side of the map. So I don't know. I think it might have just been lagging behind from MSI, whatever it is, or them not not having adjusted to the meta yet. But now it, it's it's simply like well out machine. I think there's nothing that I can say that I that I would be like, man, this is it. Junkos is probably like the biggest, I guess, difference to early in the switch where he actually seems to find more positive plays instead of just running it down. And he has like his niche champion pool that no other player shares either, where he's actually proficient on Jarvan, he's actually proficient on Pantheon, and no other player like in the league has that kind of weird champion pool to draw back from, at least from back in the days when he was on G2 in 2019, 2020, right? Genji still is the overwhelming favorite to win the LCK. I think it would be very shocking if any team that wasn't Gen G won. They have, despite losing the one best of three series to T1, they have actually gotten the highest map differential now in LCK history, even with that match loss. They lost five games over the course of this entire season. This is the one time where the two semifinal teams are not just walkover wins to the finals to where you feel like, okay, yeah, the quarters were really interesting in terms of their own series, but like, who cares because they're going to lose the semis. The semis are going to suck. I think the semis are going to be great this time. Like if you're, if you're thinking like Live Sandbox is going to beat Gen G um, or like have, so, like if, if you're worried, more worried about Live Sandbox, I think you're like creating some weird mystical like headcanon for like Live Sandbox is just like luckier than Gen G or something or Croco will just like randomly win it's got, you got to be careful about this team. I think literally on paper, you look at the lane matchup, you look at how this 12-14 meta is being played with Pryo, and I think KT is a way scarier opponent for Genji. I think that that in and of itself makes them significantly more dangerous. And to talk about the, the KT versus T1, you know, we have to rewind time to like talk about this entire year because this has been a very close matchup every single time it has been played this year even in the undefeated spring season from t1 they almost lost to kt when kt was way worse than they are now and indeed as we've talked about previously on this show it was that match that basically t1 like assimilated them like the borg and then became like the good version of t1 that had figured out these long range pick compositions. Here's the Vex. Here's the Ari. You know, we're going to play, uh, you know, very aggressively into the sideline and, and get a kill from a million miles away. And that became the T1 style that then propelled them into MSI. And then both of the matches that were played this split were 2 1 wins for T1 in what was some really, really close games. Yeah. That was the, like, that series was when uh, Aiming was playing AP Kaisa and, like, T1 had that yep. insanely close team fight where Guma just barely actually popped off and carried, um, and they barely won. And then T1 barely won in the first round robin against KT. Same with the second Telecom War this season. Both of the series were played close in summer. And, like, if you, like, in, in my mind, like, part of the reason why I started to feel like, okay, KT looks like a very strong team was how they played against T1. And I, I set T1 as kind of like a bar as, Okay, Telecom War usually gets close games out of KT this season, but this time it actually looks like it's for the right reasons and KT is playing very well. Um, whereas in the spring, it was kind of like, okay, KT drafted well here, and but they're not a strong team. Now it feels like, okay, this is a really strong team and I think we should respect how they played against T1. T1 versus KT, I think, is not what T1 wants. It's their first playoffs um, since franchising has started, so... It's been a long time since this team has been dominant, since their super team, where they won with score. Uh, has this team been pretty mediocre, honestly, and uh, was at threat of relegation even at times, actually, uh, and big comeback. So I, I'm looking forward to seeing how they're going to perform here. Problem is, with predictions like this, is that um, we just don't know what's going on with T1. We don't know what their current form is, so that's why I don't feel confident to say, yeah, like, T1 looked pretty bad recently. KT looked really good. Like, so if they win, they'll win again. Like, it's hard for me to do that. It's, it's also true that the we don't have... It was only this last week that LCK was on 12-14. So, you know, with another few days to scrim on this patch, and after having played professionally on it now, teams could adapt very differently to the way the patch is working out. 
Let's start with uh, the Fnatic side, Dom, because the whole split, we have probably been the harshest on them, understandably, because hmm. since no one really thought Vitality would actually be good this split, despite what happened, the, the main team to get scrutinised was the super team of Fnatic. And quite frankly, all those, I mean, first of all, all those narratives are still on. They could still absolutely lose this series, be out of the playoffs, never go to Worlds, all the rest of it. But at least there's like hope now. If, 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 if everyone thought it was pure like opium that we kept saying till the very end, like, but no matter what you say about them, they could still like trip over and win a few of these bo ones. Now you see why. Like this is the problem with it with having fucking super teams. Is it's actually this might sound weird, but sometimes the super team actually having so many good players I, can allow you to mask the fundamental problems you have for way too long. Like if this was a, a normal team, they wouldn't even be in the playoffs now. It would already be over. They'd probably have kicked a few players. Probably have brought in any RL. Like they, they would have changed everything. Whereas Fnatic, they're like back at square one again. That's they always have been in this fucking permanent ground. Dogs Day that is Fnatic 2022. People are going to look at perks this weekend and say that, oh, perks, like, everyone says it's class, she obviously choked it and stuff like that. I'm going to say that that's not the case. It's just because that this team vitality that he's playing on, I think that perks is the only person trying to do the right things. He's the only person trying to do anything in the game, pushing the side lane ways, which um, I honestly think is the correct way to play the game at this point of time. And the rest of his team is just clueless to the map. I think uh, Haru's not the right jungler for that. Uh, Lebrov, I'm looking at his position on the map. They're just not helping him get the type of, the same type of resources that you, you look at the way Yankos is moving on the map. You look at the way that uh, Miki X is creating opportunities for Excel and stuff like that, right? He's lacking all of that on this Vitality team and he's left alone. He just has to like flip coin. I'm going to push the wave because that if you don't push the wave, you're not trying to play the game. And if the opponent team is that, that's just too bad then because my jungle is just AFK sitting in mid lane watching my AD carry Silk Farm. Fuck, these two teams are so shit this last two weeks. Is there a way somehow neither can go? Like, I don't want to see either of these teams in playoffs. Like, dude, XL made playoffs in about the most lackluster way fucking ever imaginable without even beating anyone good. Can we just skip past the little kids' table shit and watch real I League of Legends? Because this was this is terrible. Come on, come on then, Jensen. You can start out, mate. Come on. I mean, I, I kind of have the opposite thing because I think that Excel, um, I'm, I'm somebody who's a very big believer of the flowchart style of League of Legends, right? So, of course, I'm going to have a very big bias and I'm, I'm mates with Nelson and with young buck also people talk about listen how that's great and we can definitely get into that out. like look it was all well and good for the first four weeks the only fucking flaw on the last four weeks was the sewage pipe of shit of just fucking dis defeat screens coming up dude that team couldn't beat anyone in the second half of the split it was like what well, that was like an example of like a ufc fighter who has like no punch to his no power to his punch it doesn't matter if he lands a punch he's not gonna knock you out like you can just take those all day long the pillows mate like come on then, get defend excel then that, that's a lot of things that i think excel do correctly and here's the thing is that when you play best of ones and when you play the regular season it actually rewards teams that play a very cynical style of uh, league of legends right like if, if you have ever played like very amateur level table tennis you're gonna see people who just go over there they don't play any spin on the ball they just uh, they just play up close to the table they return the, the ball uh within the surface area of the table and their entire plan is not to win is to try to make you lose Yes, right. just and push the ball over and trust that you'll miss exactly and and, and at a very lower um and at a the, the area where people are trying to figure things out, when people are trying to come together, figure out the, the batch, the meta, and, and, and everything, that's a very cynical way of trying to, to score wins and things like that. Whereas teams that try to take a more proactive style, you're going to miss shots, right? You're going to hit shots into the sure. net, you're going to hit shots off the table, you're going to read the spin wrong and hit the yeah, ball yeah. in a strange way and stuff like that. And By I the way, what you're saying is actually a very famous trend in all racket sports. Basically, the people who go for the aggressive winners do more enforced errors. It's just a natural trend, as you're saying. Yeah, of course, go on. Yeah, but, but naturally, is that o over time that these people who actually try to win the game, they, they actually get better at the game, right? It's not to say that the other style can't can get better at the game, but it's a lot more limited. I think that this is where Excel. I was actually a little bit worried for them, and, and um, I'll, I'll explain that later on, but um, you have to be willing to be proactive, you have to be willing to take these losses, and then you start to learn. And this is my read as to why I think Excel were uh, making these, why they had this bunch of losses in the middle of the season, right? Uh, at the start, I think they did the Korean bootcamp and stuff like that. It's kind of prophetic, you know, because I saw this like clip of Kedro going out there and saying that it's um, uh, it, he kind of prophesized what would happen to Excel because he said that he done like the Korean bootcamps and he says that you go over there, you get a hit in terms of the meta, you come back, people copy you, and then you're just the same as everybody else.